Hey there folks, this is TLC Visitor's Guide in video form. I'm Larissa, I'm TLC's Environmental Technician and Covenant Coordinator, and I'm going to show you some of my favorite adventures at TLC Covenant and Property. First off, who is TLC? TLC is the Land Conservancy of British Columbia a nonprofit charitable land trust working throughout BC. TLC protects important habitat for plants, animals, and natural communities, as well as properties having historical, cultural, scientific, scenic, or compatible recreational values. The way that we do this is through three programs, which are protecting land through conservation covenants and land acquisitions, as well as connecting people to place through education, outreach, and ecological restoration. Now, this video is a part of TLC's Passport to Nature program. These are free events that are accessible for all ages and abilities, allowing opportunities for people to connect with nature. For 2022, there's only one event left after this, which is wreath making at Abkhazi Garden on December 1st, 2nd, and 4th. Abkhazi Garden is a one acre garden and heritage house in Victoria, BC. This pay by donation garden includes Japanese maples, Gary oaks, rhododendrons, and many varieties of flowers. I think at this time of year, you can still visit the heritage house for tea and snacks. Now, even though we're done for 2022 almost, 2023 is sure to be filled with many events, such as naturalist hikes, medicinal plant knowledge, and species-specific knowledge sharing, like Kem Luther's Moss Walk at the Packford Covenant. If you email hoadmin at conservancy.bc.ca, you can be added to the mailing list for 2023's Passport to Nature events, and then you will know how you can participate online and in person. The TLC's Visitor's Guide is a handy document that shows you about those special places we've been protecting together that you can visit, which includes conservation lands that are protected by covenants or are currently held by TLC. You can access the digital version of this by visiting the QR code to our side here. Now I'm sure we're all used to QR codes, but just a quick refresher, if you open your camera app and focus it on the QR code, even as a video, a link will pop up and whisk you away to a totally new place. Now, you can, we can visit conservation lands in the Visitor's Guide throughout much of the province, and this will take you on trips including Cortez Island, the Kootenays, Whistler, and even Vancouver Island. Each entry includes general information about the land, activities you can enjoy during your visit, and instructions for access. Two of my favorite places are above me here, which are Sansom Point up in the Cowichan Valley and the Souk Hills on southern Vancouver Island. One thing in common with all these places is incredible views. In preparation for your visit, we gotta be in the right mindset to support conservation on our trips. Visitors to conservation lands play an important role in supporting conservation during their visit. Visiting a natural area provides many opportunities to engage with the living world, and in return, you can help the ongoing stewardship of these special places. Some general rules to follow are, stay on the trails when hiking, biking, or horse riding. Consider taking pictures or creating a nature journal to catalog your adventures instead of taking mementos. Now just like you, I love collecting rocks and sticks, but we gotta get with TLC's great nature journaling series on YouTube so that we can find ways to appreciate and take home parts of nature with keeping it all intact and in places where it belongs. Another good tip is give wildlife lots of space and follow best practices to minimize wildlife encounters. As always, Follow pack it in, pack it out protocols. Everything you bring should go home with you, which includes trash, 
food containers, and animal waste. Since we're in the right mindset to visit a conservation area, there's a few other tips I can share to help you prepare for your visit. First up, safety. Some things I like to do are packing a hiking, first, hiking size first aid kit, telling a friend the details of the trip, and dressing for the weather, as you can see on the side here. The four protected areas that I'm going to share with you are close to residential spaces, so you should have cell reception throughout your visit. But if you make sure that you have a physical copy of a map, or you download your maps before you leave your house, you'll be able to find your way through any place. A good tip I like is either uploading a geo-referenced PDF to the Avenza app for free, or you can use the other apps like CalTopo or Gaia that have user-submitted trail data to help you track your trip in real time. As always, it's good to up your species identification game, so bring some field guides along, like plants in coastal British Columbia or birds in southwestern BC. During my contract at TLC, I've had the pleasure of visiting covenants and properties throughout BC. Each of the places I show you will include information about the natural features, ways you can enjoy the place, and neat tips and facts to get you engaged with the surroundings during your visit. Today we're going to talk about Emerald Forest, Adam Creek Regional Park Reserve, Howard Hall Nature Reserve, and the Bear and Kinghorn Covenants in Mount Work Regional Park. First up, we have the Emerald Forest in Whistler, BC. This conservation area boasts 56 hectares of upland forests and wetland ecosystems that provide habitat connectivity within a band of protected areas between Alta Lake and Green Lake. Habitat connectivity is crucial in conservation planning. This is because landscape connectivity allows for important ecological processes, such as gene flow, migration, recolonization of areas with threatened populations, as well as improving the likelihood for individual species and populations to adapt to climate change. TOC collaborates with many regional organizations to support larger conservation efforts like this that in turn provide increased benefits to the species and ecosystems. Within Emerald Forest, the upland forests have a mix of dead standing and alive trees. Dead standing trees provide important habitat for birds, bats, amphibians, and more. An example of a species that enjoys this mix of trees is the brown creeper, who prefers to have alive trees around for feeding on insects and dead trees with places to nest. Another interesting characteristic of the Emerald Forest is the huge wetland that exists. If you come to visit this place, you'll notice a large part is inaccessible due to this large healthy wetland. The wetland provides important linkages between some of the last remaining wetlands in Whistler. Over 70% of the wetlands in the area have been lost to human development. Wetlands are really important. This is because wetlands provide many functions, including protecting and improving water quality, providing habitat for fish and wildlife, storing flood water, and maintaining surface water flow during dry periods. To get to the Emerald Forest, first you'll want to find yourself on Lorimer Road in Whistler, and then drive to the end of it. Here there is a nice parking lot for you to start your trip. Now, the best way to explore is to bring your day hiking gear and follow either the hiking loop around the Emerald Forest, or you can bring a bicycle and enjoy the well-connected and paved valley trail that also crosses through the Covenant areas. The two maps for both of these adventures are provided in the QR codes to the side. During my last visit in 2021, I had a great time exploring the fungal diversity of Emerald Forest 
as well as getting drenched in late fall rains. With me, you can see a coral fungi, and surrounding are other mushrooms that have been seen in the area, which are at the top, the shaggy mane, to the right, the Admiral Bolete, and then below, some sort of false morel. BC is known for its diversity of fungi, and you can have a blast at Emerald Forest during the fall and winter especially. A special note is the Whistler Fungus Among Us Festival that happens every year on the weekend after Thanksgiving. The festival will include guided walks and many opportunities to meet other friends of fungi. The second stop in our video is to the Am Creek Regional Park Reserve in Souk, BC. This 6.4 hectare conservation covenant has creek, estuary, riparian area, and upland forest ecosystems that were protected from condo development in 1997. This was possible due to the collaboration between the Society for the Protection at AM Creek, Habitat Acquisition Trust, the Regional District, and TLC, alongside the Souk community. In the late 90s, developers wanted to buy the land to build a condo building. The quickly forming and ever active SPAC managed to rally the soup community to advocate for this space. The protected area that is held by the CRD is now protected against ecosystem harm in perpetuity, no matter who the owner is, due to the conservation covenant co-held by HAT and TLC. One way that TLC supports landholders and communities in taking care of these places is through ecological restoration. Since 2017, TLC has been trialing invasive species management at the park reserve. Our focus has been on stopping the quickly spreading periwinkle, Finca Minor, from taking over the forest floor. We have successfully stopped the growth of the periwinkle using the lasagna gardening method of trimming the periwinkle to the soil, then layering thickly overlapping cardboard, and then topping it all off with clean bark mulch. In the previously treated areas, the periwinkle is hard to find, and now native plants are naturally revegetating, which includes the big leaf maple and salmonberry. Ecological restoration is ongoing at AM Creek, and if you'd like to get involved, you can email covenants at conservancy.bc.ca. You can be a part of taking care of this special place, like the people in the photos above. You can get to AM Creek by following Souk Road out of Victoria towards Souk, and you will find the parking lot for the park reserve on your left hand side just after Laidlaw Road where the gas station is. One of my favorite ways to enjoy AM Creek is on a day that you need a bit of forest relaxation. Bring a picnic lunch and enjoy the cool breeze of the creek on a hot day after a short hike or a birding outing. On the map that is shared, you can see the east and the west trail systems at AM Creek as explored by me. If you start on the east side of the Covenant, the, one of your first stops on your short walk would be to the Periwinkle Eradication Project. Be sure to pat a maple that's newly blooming on the head for good luck. Now, if you follow the trail on the west side of the creek, you'll be able to make it quite a bit further out to the estuary and see the Souk Basin. This is also where the Purple Martin boxes are. Speaking of which, AM Creek is an awesome place for birding. You can check out the purple martin nest boxes in the estuary, listen for ospreys overhead in the forest canopy, or I highly encourage you to keep an eye out for the sandpipers dancing along the shores of AM Creek. You can use the Merlin Bird app to record the sounds of birds you can't see. Let the app run for a few minutes and then review the results of the suggested birds. Once you know what bird is supposed to look like from what it sounded like, it can be easier to find using your binoculars and following that sound. No matter what you do, 
Don't play back bird calls or songs to the birds. It can really confuse them. The third stop for us will be to the beautiful Howard Harrell Nature Reserve which is 25 hectares of protected coastal Douglas fir forest on Salt Spring Island. There are interspersed rocky outcrops, small wetlands, and streams that flow into the upper Fulford Creek. This area provides connectivity between multiple protected areas that you can explore by hiking, as shown in the trails on the map to our right. The connectivity includes the protected areas of Bryant Hill Park, Andreas Folk Nature Sanctuary, and some provincial land. There's a wide variety of native plants and wildflowers here. For example, the slides show spotted coral root, coral rhiza maculata, longhorned sea blush, plectritis macrocera, and vanilla leaf, Aclis trifella. In the bottom left hand corner is one of the largest arbutus trees that I have ever seen. To get to the Howard Harrell Nature Reserve, when you get off the ferry, you're going to want to follow Fulford Ganges Road onto Marisad Drive and then follow that to the end where there's a parking lot. There's signage at this parking lot for Bryant Hill Park, and when you follow this trail up and over, you'll end up in the Harrell Reserve. The best way to explore this area is by hiking for the day and stopping to catalog the interesting plants and wildlife trees along the way. Follow the loop trail along the reserve. There's a map at the beginning of the loop where the yellow triangle is on the map below. Now, a hot tip is, the dead standing trees throughout the reserve can provide important wildlife habitat. More than 25% of terrestrial vertebrates in BC depend on these trees for nesting, feeding, communication, roosting, shelter, and overwintering. Pileated woodpeckers, martens, bats, and bald eagles are examples of species that rely on the presence of wildlife trees. For example, the pileated woodpecker is a primary cavity excavator that creates square excavations in trees in their hunt for their favorite food, ants. The holes left behind by the woodpecker are typically numerous and deep, providing additional habitat for secondary cavity users, such as the chickadees and the nut hatchets. Martins use wildlife trees for their dens, which they create inside of cavities and hollow logs. Bats prefer tall, old, dead, large diameter trees with peeling bark, cracks, and crevices, as these all provide safe and closed areas for roosting. As for bald eagles, they're open nesters, which utilize broken tops of dead trees to support the weight of their giant nests. Eagles and other birds of prey also appreciate the bare limbs of dead trees for perching and watching out for prey. The fourth and final stop for this video is to the Bear and Kinghorn Covenants in Mount Work Regional Park. There are a large diversity of ecosystems in this covenant, including Douglas fir forests, cedar lowlands, and Arbutus rock outcrops, all of which make up this 130 hectare protected area, part of the largest regional park on southern Vancouver Island. Mount Work clocks in at 743 hectares. A diversity of ecosystems like what exists inside of this covenant is thought to increase species diversity. The support for this comes from the habitat heterogeneity hypothesis, which has been around since the late 1960s. This hypothesis proposes that structurally complex habitats may provide more niches and diverse ways of exploiting environmental resources, and this leads to increased species diversity. 
In the Covenant areas, I've come across wetlands surrounded by forests. Those are recognized as an extremely valuable habitat assemblage. The provincially blue-listed northern red-legged frog, Reina aurora, has been observed by TLC staff and iNaturalist users within Mount Work Regional Park. This frog requires structurally complex wetlands containing a mix of vegetation and open water, as well as nearby forest with canopy cover and downed wood and litter. The wetland provides habitat components for the frogs, such as algae and invertebrates for food, vegetation for cover, and the boundary in between the water and land is also great for laying eggs. The forest canopy, though, creates a cool and moist microclimate, loose soil for burrowing, and downed wood for refuge. The northern red-legged frog is ecologically significant as it plays a major role in the food chain, aids in decomposition, and transfers nutrients between terrestrial and aquatic ecosystems. Everything in an ecosystem really does play a part, and it all is interconnected. If you look at the map on the side here, you'll see that their covenant area is in dark green, with lots of places to explore outside of it too. The photos above include the fairy slipper orchid, Calypso bulbosa, another spotted coral root, and some type of Clavaria fungi. Maybe they're fairy fingers. To get to the Barrow and Kinghorn Covenants, follow Mun Road in the Highlands to the Mount Work Park Mun Road parking lot. From here, hike northwards and stay along the western side of the park and you'll mostly be within the Covenant areas. I feel like the best way to explore is to take a short day hike up to the Kinghorn Cabin to have lunch and sketch the surrounding Arbutus trees. While in the area, Keep an eye out for the many signs Jim Kinghorn made to mark special places and trails. Hot tip, stay on the mapped trails and leave no trace to help support the sensitive, rare, and at-risk species and ecosystems within the park. As shown in the photos here, we have the red-legged frog, Townsend's big-eared bat, and the very tiny, hand-lens-worthy threaded vertigo snail. These species are all at risk for extinction and rely on conservation efforts such as protecting land from conversion and pollution, the management of invasive species, and improving the quality of habitats. As well, while you're here, enjoy the larger Mount Work Regional Park, which provides separate areas for intensive recreation as well as conservation, which provides support for the species and the many interconnected features of their habitat. We've made it. This is the end of the show. Thank you for joining me. I look forward to seeing you out and about exploring and joining TLC for more education and naturalist opportunities. I highly encourage you to connect with TLC, either by emailing hoadmin for general inquiries, to access the visitor's guide, for membership and donation inquiries, and also to get notifications for the upcoming 2023 Passport to Nature events. Shout out to Covenants email and you can ask questions regarding land protection and conservation covenants, participate in volunteer monitoring and restoration as well. As always, all of our projects and opportunities for you to get involved are listed on our website at conservancy.bc.ca. Have a good one.